What's up guys, it's Drack, and today we are reviewing the Diana. The what? The Diana. And that might have been a little cringe, but this is a super compact, semi or full auto, like machine pistol, delivering 140 FPS performance with a fully injection molded shell, a board built into an ultra compact package, a 4S LiPo, a really small one hiding in here, and uh, injection molded magazines, which do almost Walther style, extend the grip down here so that you can brandish it however you want. Obviously, no orange tip. This is an incredibly dangerous piece of sporting equipment, not the kind of thing that you would use for your you know, backyard or public park battles at all. Even considering that this one is in teal, I know that Luke has teal ones, pink ones, and clear ones. The clear ones I don't believe are out yet, but for $300 dues, you can pick one of these up over at outofdarts.com. Now it's coming to us from a company that I don't know anything about called like Hair Technology, H-A-R-E, like the big rabbits. And then the logo for it is an H-C, so maybe Hair Corporation. Regardless of all that action, I mean, you've got a very subtle switch over here all the way back is no go, forward is one go. Again, like that's, it's a very quick response. There's a slight trigger delay, but all electronic blasters have some amount. This one's pretty quick. For a blaster that doesn't idle, it's certainly better than say, like the Gen 1 Omnias, and maybe a little less than something like a Momentum, hypothetically. Let's click it into full auto real quick. It's pretty snappy, pretty fast. So the magazine that it comes with is an 11 rounder and that goes really quick in full auto. You're not gonna Celine from Underworld with this thing and just infinite reload. It comes with only one magazine. I don't know if Luke sells additional magazines, but what he will sell you is a cutting guide to turn, I think, Nightingale mags compatible with this. That would be my one complaint about the blaster. Everything else about it seems pretty excellent. The plastic quality is really good. The build quality is really good. The motors have these aluminum sort of vents on the side, which both act as a heat sink and cooling up top. The iron sights are a little cheesy, but they're like, they're pretty, like, you know, real steel grade iron sights. It's a little, a little spooky. The trigger feel is quite good. Again, like you've got a lot of metal in this, a lot of injection molded uh, plastic or polymer. Overall, it feels very snappy, very good. There's the hair logo right on the muzzle I'm seeing now. Luke went ahead and sent me a thumb screw with mine so that I could open it up like so. Normally, this is a recessed hex like the rest of them, but when I pop that off, you can see there is the admittedly about as big as it possibly can be 4S LiPo. So if you don't have 4S LiPo charging capability, that's a consideration when you're picking up a pistol like this because this is really like, and I'm not sure who it's for, it would be an excellent tournament backup pistol if you're used to playing that way. Remember, switching to your pistol is always faster than reloading. With a max FPS claiming 140 FPS, that means that it would not be a particularly good HVZ blaster, it would shoot a little too hot, and it would be pretty soft for a competitive tournament area blaster. So I don't know where it fits in unless you just want to be the gunslinger with the goods at your uh, your super stock battle. But let's put it over the chronograph. Let's see if there's maybe a way to bring down the FPS. I mean, you know, it's, we've already got dart buildup in the barrel there, but it's pretty spicy. I mean, it feels, it's got a good weight to it. It definitely feels like, you know, a real steel nerf pistol, so to speak, or an auto pistol. It's pretty cool. Let's take it outside, put it over the chronograph, see what kind of numbers it delivers. All right, so we're out here with the Diana. Hopefully we got the white balance figured out. Trying our best for you guys. Fully loaded magazine. You can see they push down into the, uh, the extension there when fully loaded, clicks in. Gravity drop is very smooth. You could, uh, you know, you could John Wick all day with it if that's something that you were interested in. Let's put it in semi for the purposes of going over the chronograph here. Again, we're expecting about 140. That's what Luke says on the website. Fires from the top there, 144. 145, 41, 37. All right, let's do some in full. And pretty consistently 140. So I think that we can believe the claims. Let's dial a couple in over here at our regular uh, lantern up top and just see how that feels. And then we have four to go. So we'll put two up there and then two down range and just see, you know, kind of how it feels. But, well, that was interesting. That's why they're honest reviews, folks. It looks like we finally chewed up a dart. What an interesting, you can see the flywheels cut in there and there it really took a bite out of this one just for giggles. Cause I assume that this is using a solenoid to push based on how, yeah. Let's see if the dart even destroyed is capable of firing again. And it is, but admittedly very poorly. So let's put some down range. 
Huh. Well, that was interesting. It was firing great up until this segment, guys. We probably put a couple hundred darts through it. I don't want to sell it short. All right, semi-auto. Solid. I don't know if maybe feathering the trigger, like if that's different than, I mean, I guess since it's in semi-auto, you should just pull and hold each time, which is unusual to me, but that's the, the muscle memory there. Anyway, you know, that's the Diana. It's, it's pretty spicy. It's pretty spinnable. It needs a way to get additional injection molded magazines, in my opinion. But, you know, this is the machine pistol that like, you know, your cyberpunk fantasies are made out of. I think that it is really cool, albeit, you know, there's some safety features that it needs and then the performance is comparably low. I can't believe I'm saying something about like, it does 140 in full auto, it's just in a world of, you know, some incredibly high performance flywheel blasters, $300, 140 is a little low, but you're not buying it at that price point because you want the highest performance, you know, micro flywheel blaster. You're buying it at that price point because you want this incredibly sleek, no snag injection molded shell. So definitely a cool option out on the market. Like I said, Luke has a few in stock. I think that if you buy the in stock one, it might still get here in time for the holidays, but a cute little machine pistol. Definitely a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below. As always, much love, blast on, track out. <laughs>